Thank you for joining us. Um, we are excited to be uh, playing for the 2021 season, but first I just wanna thank you all for uh, the support, the thoughts and the prayers that you gave us uh, over this past year to, to make it through 2020. Uh, it was overwhelmingly um, uh, just so positive and, and so encouraging to have all of your support. Camp was able to make it through last year without taking out any uh, any uh, loans, and uh, we were able to pay back our, our savings for the cost of the dewatering project to keep camp um, uh, dry. So thank you so much, and we're we're excited as we plan for this upcoming season. Um, we did uh, make a decision. We, I mean, in the, uh, the the uh, camp leadership, the LCA board of directors, as well as the camp manager team, we've been uh, looking at, you know, you know, what's our twenty our twenty twenty one season going to be like. Of course, there is still a lot of uncertainty there. But um, in the fall, we uh, we were we as we planned for, we decided to promote a full season as we were. Um, uh, really unsure about what the summer might look like and it seemed premature at that point in October or November to make a decision on the following summer. But now as it is closer and as we are doing the room drawing for the uh, for the uh, family weeks, uh, we've decided to restrict our capacity or to transition to a, a light model for the 2021 season. It's, it's similar to last season, although with some s significant changes to it as well. Um, uh, this unfortunately does mean that, not, that everyone who wants to come to camp won't be able to come this summer. And that is very, very sad. We were so much uh, looking forward to the possibility of having a normal or full season, but that does not look like it's in the cards, or at least it, it doesn't seem to be prudent at this point to be playing for one. Um, and so for us to be able to hire our summer staff and plan for the program, as well as for you to make your plans for the summer, we thought it was the best choice now to, to uh, limit it. And if we're able to expand it, we most certainly will. Um, and, uh, but uh, it seemed at this point to, to go ahead and start to transition for all those reasons I mentioned into a, a light model. So I've got uh, Jess on this uh, video as well. And she's gonna help us uh, walk through what this experience is gonna look like um, this year. So um, I'm uh, thank you, Jess, thanks for joining us. You're welcome. I feel like I'm hosting like a radio show or a TV show, but <laughs> not, but let's pretend. Um, and let's let's start with the, uh, the uh, family retreats. Uh, how are they, what's this model looking like for this year? For sure. So, um, Chip, like you said, 125 guests on site. We're excited to be able to, to host um, this year for each week. Uh, but first, our retreats are going to be a six-day retreat again. Um, and so we're transitioning, kind of keeping our, our same schedule as last year, except we're excited to be able to offer um, five days of the Dean and Morning Youth Program. Um, so for Family Weeks 1 through 6, the retreat will conclude on Friday with lunch. And then um, for family weeks seven, eight, and nine, it will continue to end on Friday with breakfast. Um, we've adjusted the rates um, accordingly to kind of reflect this reduction. Cool. So now um, we did this last year, and and the reason for shortening for a day uh, was so that you, um, so that our staff were able to clean camp well and give some 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 time in those housing spaces to kind mm -hmm. of rest and for the air to go through there before the new guests come in. So it's exactly. a, 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 a safety reason there. So, yes. So tell us about how we're handling the bathrooms. That was one of the biggest changes last year. Everyone had their own private bathroom, so to speak. There were assigned bathrooms and they didn't share with anyone outside the, their, their household. How are we handling that this year? Great question. So we're going to continue to do assigned bathrooms this year, Chip, um, but they're going to be assigned shared bathrooms. Um, so with your family who comes to camp, um, you'll be assigned um, a a restroom for males and a restroom for females, but you'll be sharing them with other families who are staying in the inn. So there'll continue to be no public restrooms in the inn. Um, this kind of transition um, helps us also to be able to accommodate 125 people for the week. Wonderful. All right. And what are your thoughts on, on, on what the program is going to be looking like this year? 
Yeah, we're excited to be able to offer some more programmatic activities. You know, we've learned a lot about uh, camp and COVID. Um, a lot of research has been done about camp and COVID. So we feel we're able to offer more um, and do that responsibly and safely this year. So that's gonna include a morning youth program for kids. So that's children's ages, you know, zero through college. Um, some more sporting activities, you know, group things like softball, um, and also some of our kind of our Hallmark tournaments. Well, we are going to continue to do things outside as much as possible, um, you know, and evaluate kind of our indoor space. We've got some creative ideas in the pipeline about how to maybe make use of those indoor spaces and, and still manage that risk well. Right. So we've, we've learned some uh, things, we meaning everybody, the entire world about how COVID is trans heard from person to person and so the contact stuff while still a concern not as great of, of, of a concern so um, sharing basketballs and that kind of stuff is not as a concern as long as people are still washing their hands and hand sanitizing but we're not looking to have to wipe down everything in between use which is how it was last summer so it does open us up so uh, exactly and um, you know we are uh, last summer we had, we had 14 summer summer staff and this year we're looking to have what closer to 2025 20, or so yeah, around 25, maybe 30, kind of depending on where we land. Right, yeah, so that'll allow us to offer some more programming as well and um, and be able to move things around a little bit, a little bit easier. Um, uh, people always wanna know about the meals. So how are the meals gonna be offered this, this next year? You got it. We're gonna offer indoor meal service again for breakfast and dinner. So that'll be served family style in the dining room. Um, and then lunch will continue to be served as a takeout lunch. And we're gonna try to you know, modify that experience a little bit. So you'll be able to tailor that lunch for your family, um, but we'll kind of keep that model of, of two of our indoor meals served and then a takeout lunch. And the uh, meal time is a good uh, place to bring up that, you know, how did we get to 125? So last summer our cap was a hundred people. And, um, and that was based off of what we were anticipating was going to be um, the, the, which it ended up being the, uh, for most of the uh, season, the limit of 50 people in our dining room. So we had two mm -hmm. mealtime offerings of uh, 50 people each. Now towards the end of the uh, season in the fall, it transitioned to 50% capacity, which is around hundred people, you know? And so what we've kind of looked at is to get to 125 is, um, cause there's lots of things that, that kind of vary in there. One would be like, what will actually be the restrictions? We don't know, but we're hoping it will go to that more expanded uh, 50%. And then we have the opportunity to put some tables on the front porch of the, of the inn during meal times, not the entire day, but during those meal times, that allow us to expand our dining as well as the inn uh, map room there, put some guests in there as well. So that allow us to get to 125, assuming that the, re that the restrictions allow that, or if we have to do a, a double meal time, that's something that we will be exploring as well. But we felt we could comfortably go up to 125 and continue to use our other space as well and our programming well, and we weren't overtaxing camp and of course allowing some space for our cottagers to come in and enjoy camp. Uh, we really want to welcome them back this year. Uh, they were very judicious in their use of camp last last summer, but we're really hoping that they come back and are able to be down at, at camp and enjoy the programs that we have. So, all right, tell us more. I know many of the COVID restrictions we're all from, familiar with, or they're really not any, any different at camp. I want to just kind of walk us through that so we under, under, understand what are the COVID restrictions going to be for this next season. You got it. We've got some of those kind of uh, interventions to, to help manage our risk. And so we're going to continue to do symptom screening um, for guests when they arrive on site um, and ask for, you know, guests who become symptomatic while they're here at camp um, to report that to us. Um, we're going to continue to be diligent about hand hygiene. So I think those hand sanitizer stations all over camp, encouraging hand washing. We're going to continue to sanitize um, high touch surfaces. So this is um, not, you know, every single basketball, like you mentioned, Chip, but these are more, um, the research is really leading towards keeping the, the you know, the doorknobs, the, the windows that are being opened and closed, um, hand railings, you know, those are the things that we're going to, we're going to sanitize um, on a regular basis again. Um, we're going to do as much outdoor programming as possible. Uh, as we've learned more about this virus and really its transmission through air, um, outdoor is some of the, the safest places for us to be. Um, masks will be continue to be required in our indoor spaces. Um, we might require them at some activities to kind of manage that risk as well. 
And then of course, we're gonna ask that, you know, guests kind of observe and monitor themselves uh, in the days leading up to camp. Um, and if they are exposed or have had close contact with someone diagnosed with COVID, um, that they um, do not attend camp uh, for their season. Great, and I'm sure people are thinking, well, do I need to be vaccinated to come to, uh, to, uh, to camp? And that's not gonna be one of our re requirements for many reasons. One, most importantly, that it's probably not gonna be available to everyone who is coming to camp by the time the season yeah. happens. And then also the question about testing, you know, and still we are, we are limited on our testing in uh, Michigan. And, and we, we uh, do hope that testing be more widespread for everyone as it gets closer to these, but at this point, we're not saying that you need to be tested before you arrive or that we're doing testing on site for our family weeks. Uh, it might be different for our team weeks and we'll talk about those in a second, but um, you know, testing is still pretty pretty limited. You know, I mean, of course, if you have the opportunity to get tested, that that's that's a good assurance for, uh, for uh, you as you come to camp. And then I, I think, uh, sad to say, I think that, you know, while last summer we had no cases that we were aware of at, at, at a camp, uh, the virus is much more widespread. At this point, and of course, we're hoping as seasonally it'll decrease as we go into the uh, summer. And um, but uh, you know, it, it is it is likely that there that there will be cases at camp next summer because how widespread it is. And we will do all that we can to prevent it. But I think as far as expeditions go, I, I'm sure most people would probably agree as they look at how things are going. I mean, last summer I knew a handful of people that that had it, and now I. I know only a handful of people who have not had it. You know? So things are starting to change. So, and that's um, where the, the hand hygiene and the mask wearing are, are critical for us managing our risk at camp um, and, and keeping our guests safe. And the outdoor ag activities. And that's something that, 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 that we've seen on, and I know Jess, you've done a lot of research on this. And they did, you know, the camps last year that operated, that were outside 100% or as much as possible, had mm -hmm. no cases. You know, it yep. really was the indoor activities. So it's a good transition here to our teen weeks. So um, let's let's that that is something that uh, we didn't have our our team weeks last year, and it was extremely sad not to not to have them. But we are planning on having them this year. Uh, we decided to uh, to limit the number of campers that we could have here to 80. And normally we have we could have up 165 teens here. We decided to go with 80 because that that was the uh, number that we could keep the group small enough. Housing, you know, we're not planning on putting a lot of people in rooms or be really more uh, selective on that and keeping them a smaller. All in case there was an there were people that had it at camp, it's not going to spread to the entire camp. So that's our reason to keeping it at 80, a kind of a a, a, a manageable number. Um, uh, just tell us a little bit about some of the research that you've done and, and kind of what that led to as far as some other aspects to our retreat. For sure. So um, there's been research that's been done on camps who held programming in 2020 um, and kind of their their response to COVID, who, how many cases they had at camp. Um, and these are national organizations who are doing this research have published it. And so for us, um, their, their significant findings have led to us doing all of our meals outside for teen weeks. So we're gonna kind of transform that patio space into an outdoor dining space. Um, groups will get to rotate around to different, to different eating spaces um, on the patio, but we're excited to, to eat outside. Um, and also we're gonna kind of transition our group model a little bit. Usually when you come to camp, um, you're not in a group with your roommate. Um, we really kind of spread teams out as much as possible um, to help form those relationships. Um, one of the things that research is showing is, is minimizing those cohorts or those groups, those exposure places is, is critical. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you're, whoever your roommate is, you're gonna be in a group with them because um, you're already having that close contact. Um, and so there's actually gonna be opportunities for groups to even get to know each other more uh, this year um, as they're gonna be um, sharing a roommate or a room with them. They'll be eating with them. They'll be doing group activities with them. Um, and so these groups will remain consistent over the week. They're gonna get to eat together, play together. They'll do Bible study together. Um, and that's gonna be a, a safer place for them to be able to take mask breaks together. Um, so that's a group where when they're just with their group, they'll be able to take their masks off um, and kind of enjoy each other's company. Um, in, in talking about masks, um, we're gonna have our teens wear masks at all times, um, except for when they're in their rooms, you know, when they're sleeping, showering, eating, or kind of on that canoe trip. 
But um, when they are around with other teens, indoors or outdoors, when they're interacting with other staff, um, they are gonna be wearing their mask to kind of help uh, mitigate the risk at camp. Um, and then speaking of those spaces and kind of the outdoor experience, uh, we're gonna be moving everything outside. And so we're gonna have Bible study outside. We're gonna do, we're gonna have a sunset Vespers essentially um, every night. We'll be doing outdoor trading post service. Um, and so there's really some great uh, creative opportunities here to kind of have a unique teen week experience. It is kind of sad that teens, the uh, new teens won't have the opportunity to sit on the hard rondo floor during Vespers, but they'll get no, spoiled with the, <laughs> with the chapel on the uh, beach stadium seats there. So um, also, you know, these retreats will be a day shorter. So this is yeah. to facilitate transition of our of our counselors that are there and our guests and allow us to transition between retreats easier. So um, it's gonna end after lunch on Friday as opposed to breakfast on Saturday. And those dates will be Re reflective of that. Um, the rates are not going to be changing. Um, and that's because of um, there's going to be additional costs. And this gets to our, our next thing, our next thing, and that's the COVID rest restriction. So all the things that we mentioned during family weeks would be the same. We are, and this is based on the recommendation of all those uh, um, groups, the uh, Camp Doc, C Camp uh, Nurse, uh, Christian Camping Association, as well as the American Camping Association, all recommend testing campers when they arrive at camp. And mm -hmm. so assuming that rapid testing, like kind of that 15 minute type of thing is available, uh, that's gonna be, there will be a cost to that. And so uh, we don't know what that cost is. We've heard 30 to $50, I'm not quite sure yet, but uh, testing campers when they come in. Now, um, you're of course welcome to, you know, limit your exposure prior to to camp we'll be encouraging that if you're able to get tested before you arrive that's great we're still going to be testing on site when you're here that's our goal uh, you'll learn more about that as we learn more what's actually going to be available but um, that's why we're not going to be changing the the or the array so that uh, kind of uh, will help cover the cost of that so mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. Um, let's move on to, we have all these other retreats that we have going, um, and we're still planning on having everything that's on our schedule. We're still planning on having them, maybe in more limited fashion. So uh, the summer starter, uh, which used to be called the golf and the gospel, uh, that we're still planning on, on having that group. That group actually was kind of already in the light model. They already were about the size we can accommodate. So we're going to about 40 to 60 people for that, as we normally have. We can still plan to um, accommodate that. Their meals, they've always done a takeout lunch, so lined up for that. There'll be served meals, and so there won't be any buffets at this point. That's something that we were anticipating will not be um, allowed yet, so we're going to be doing um, more of, um, we'll do be served meals for breakfast and for dinner and a uh, take our lunch and then, you know, activities outside as much as possible. Um, and that's kind of the, the role for Luther Hostel and our fall retreats too, right? Just as like, we understand that the weather, like last summer, we had amazing summer weather, right? But you can't <laughs> yeah. expect it to be that way in October, right? And so uh, we would have to do some things inside and, uh, but we are definitely gonna be outside if we can for everything. Exactly. Right? And for, and for some of those retreats, like for fall confirmation, you know, when we do things inside, we're going to try to do them um, with, by church group as much as possible, um, again, to kind of help uh, mitigate that risk. Yeah, so, you know, for the Luther Hustle retreat, you know, look at maybe 40 to 60 guests, which is, which I think is, 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 is what we can accommodate for housing and for meals and everything. And then you're uh, looking for the men's and women's retreat. Retreats very similar to to uh, last summer, um, yeah. maybe slightly more similar to our family because we kind of capped at 100 last year, maybe 125 this year. Uh, we had a we had a tent last year for you know probably having that again and you know kind of do as much maybe a little bit more programming uh, as we've learned what we can do recreationally, but a very very similar program. And then fall confirmation we did not do last year. We're planning on doing that. Tell us what you're what you're thinking about for that. Yeah, again, we're going to we're going to be limiting the attendance to that retreat. Uh, think of using kind of our same teen week model in terms of of housing and, and making sure that we're not overfilling rooms and spaces. Um, so we're looking at about 80 guests, students and chaperones. Um, and again, we're going to try to do things outside. And, and when we can't because of the weather in October, um, we'll be doing things kind of as as a church group. So um, think of still that same um, impactful experience in terms of our 
our Bible study experience, our Vespers experiences, um, our, our games and activities, um, we'll still really be um, striving to do that well. Um, it'll just probably look a little different. Well, and I think we learned last year that uh, Camp Arcadia can change and we can still meet our mission. People can still be renewed in spirit, mind, and body at camp, even when things are, are different. It's exciting this year. Looking forward to be able to offer some of the things that we, that we, that we normally offer. Um, you know, and I guess a, as we move forward, you know, I ask your, your patience with us and, and with everything as, we, as things are going to be changing, possibly, you know, as restrictions come out and, 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 and without, we'll have to maybe adjust our plans on that. And we'll be, our goal is to be as transparent with you as possible as a, what, about what the experience is going to be like. Um, re remember that if, if you make a reservation and, and you can't make it because you've been exposed to COVID or you have COVID, that you'll get, that you'll get a full refund. We want people to be safe. We don't want people to lose on, on that. Um, we also know like, you know, you're hopefully watching this video on, on a Wednesday or Thursday. And uh, before you've been, if you applied for the family week, you probably, you know, on Friday, we'll be sending out emails, everyone letting me know if they got in or didn't get in. Uh, give us this next two days to continue to work out this and figure it out. And then Friday, you know, once you get your, your status on that, whether you're, you got in or if you're on the waiting list, there'll be some opportunities, some other weeks that are some openings in there. So mm -hmm. there'll be some moving around there, but I would encourage you once again to have some patience. There probably will be a good amount of movement of people who have to cancel and come in. So you might've not gotten in, but that was always the case that there was movement off the wait list. There will be possibly this year even more than that. So, um, and uh, you know, once again, thank you for all of your support, for your thoughts and your prayers and your gifts um, as we as we go into th this year as well. So, and we do look forward to hearing from you. If you've got questions, you want to learn more about these different retreats and what the experience is going to be like. As we know more, we will let you know. But feel free to reach out to us too. So, well, thank you so much.